Happy New Year, first of all. Uh, I hope we have about a million or two million more of them, if we can ever get over this summer. See what I did there? Uh, hey everyone, well, this should be a fun one. Uh, no tutorials for this Jimmy Classic, as far as I can tell, other than uh, a few just for the intro. Uh, we're going to take it a little bit further to about the four minute mark. Going to break this into two parts, this being part one, which will take us to about the two minute mark. Uh, we'll tackle the rest in part two. Uh, I think I might be a little bit nuts trying to take this one on in a tutorial, but I've been uh, a little bit obsessed with Machine Gun lately since I, I first learned it a couple of months ago, so I figured that I would share what I've learned. Now, this thing is 12 minutes long and very loosely structured and very difficult to find and hold the melody uh, sometimes if one's not playing over a backing track or with a band behind you. Uh, the first four minutes or so has some form of structure to it, but Jimmy would change it constantly from recording to recording. Uh, the song doesn't even have any key changes, I don't think. I'm pretty sure it stays in uh, E minor throughout its entirety. Uh, I guess one could say that it's more of uh, an idea of a song, custom built for Jimmy to solo over rather than a fully formed song. There isn't even a main riff, really, to speak of. It's just different degrees of soloing from start to finish. Uh, at or around the four minute mark when he hits that famous note, uh, the famous note, then he, uh, he just goes off for about eight minutes, uh, sometimes up to 20 minutes. Uh, I won't be teaching you how to go off, nor that part of the solo note for note. I'd be here for months trying to figure that uh, out note for note. Jimmy never played it the same way twice. One couldn't really. It's not that kind of solo. It's very much an improvisational type solo. Uh, I, I suppose if this video shows any interest and lots of likes and lots of views, then maybe I'll tackle it. But uh, instead, for now, when we get to that point in the solo, I'll give you some guidelines, some ideas and tricks and licks and things that Jimmy did to improvise over this part. Machine Gun was uh, Jimmy's guitar showcase, a solo where he just played. On advice from his manager, Jimmy needed a live piece without the tricks that Jimmy had started to become famous for, sometimes too famous for more so than his actual playing. Uh, with Machine Gun, there would be no teeth playing. There would be no lighting the guitar on fire, no rubbing the guitar on his amps and microphone stands or behind his back or behind his neck and so on and so forth. Just do what you do best, Jimmy. Play the guitar. And that's what he did uh, in this piece, sometimes upwards of 20 minutes, like I said. Uh, some would say that the Fillmore East performance of Machine Gun from the Band of Gypsies album was Jimmy's greatest guitar performance overall. The greatest thing that he ever recorded, and I can't disagree with that assessment. And this is the performance that we will be using as our base to get started, though it will be sort of an amalgam of numerous performances in my effort to give it some form of structure to teach and to play along with, and most of all to memorize, I suppose. Like I said, it's very loosely structured, and at times Jimmy was doing nothing but banging on some open strings or chugging some mutes or playing along in sync with what he was singing, or sometimes not at all, sometimes just, you know, not doing anything. Like I said, very loose play. So I've taken bits and pieces from different performances in an effort to keep the flow going throughout. Uh, I think it's a good start uh, for you to take it and do with it as you will. Uh, it's a hell of a lot of fun to experiment and improvise over with this one. 
once one has the basic structure of what Jimmy's doing down. Uh, so let's get started, shall we? First of all, we're in uh, drop tuning. We're tuned down one full step. So uh, I'm not plugged in right now. So I'm going to get myself plugged in. And uh, so tune your guitar one down one full step. Uh, it's important for this piece because there's a lot of bending, a lot of feel in it, and it just has a, a much nicer feel when you're when you're tuned down a full step to play this. And uh, so pause this video. I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to get myself plugged in and get some kind of tone going here, uh, resembling Jimmy's, and uh, and then we'll get started. All right, so we are working in the E minor pentatonic uh, scale for this one, pretty much exclusively. When we get to the main solo, and I'm showing you a few licks and tricks and things to do, you can dip into the Dorian, and that works very well as well. So uh, we'll get to that when the time comes. Um, we're on the neck uh, pickup, or the, uh, the fourth position works quite well as well. Um, now... Where this is some pretty advanced uh, Jimi Hendrix playing, and uh, as um, as Machine Gun is pretty much at its core a blues song, uh, that means it's some pretty advanced blues playing, and uh, so really not stuff for beginners, I suppose. If you're a beginner, give it a shot. You, uh, it can't uh, do anything to make you better. So uh, we're gonna get started. Uh, we're in drop tuning down one full step. Here's your tuning. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to play through the opening a uh, little bit, and then we'll get into it. So, um, so this will be kind of like part one of this video, and then we'll get into part two, and then the 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 rest will be in part the part two video, if that makes any sense. Uh, so let's dig into that. We're going to start with a very quiet open E string. Well, that wasn't so quiet, was it? And then we're going to do these little uh, chugs. Basically down, up, down, up with your hands muting at the 12th fret. And then you're going to hammer on from, uh, uh, what's that, 12 to 14 back to 12 of the G string. hammer on 12 to 14 again and back to 12 and then you're going to do a trill uh, on the D string between 12 and 14 I think you can get you have enough time to get maybe two trills in but get as many in, in as you can I, I usually do two and then back up to the open E back into that down, up, down, up mute. And then after you do that down, up, down, up mute uh, four more times, then you're going to hammer on again from uh, 12 to 14 back to 12 of the G string and then just let that note ring with vibrato. So up to that point. And now you're going to make an uh, E minor chord up in here in this position here at the 14th fret of the D, the 12th fret of the G, and then the bottom two strings open. And, uh, and then you're going to basically uh, rake down and then uh, rake down those four strings and then grab the bottom two on your way back up. So.
and uh, as soon as you do that, you're back into the mutes again. Again, down, up, down, up. That's pretty much the whole rhythm, the down, up, down, up. And so this time, you're gonna hammer on twice from 12 to 14 with vibrato. And then we're into this. So that part, you're raking down the top three strings, the open E muted with your palm, and the 14th fret of the A, the 14th fret of the D, and then off to the 12 of the D, up to 14 of the A, and then hammering on 12 to 14 of the D. So up to that point, and then back into that, back into that again, and then hammering on 12 to 14 of the G back to 12 again, like we did earlier. And then we're getting into the uh, the machine guns. So up to that point, slowly. And now we're in the machine guns. Nine times. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So that's uh, after the after the nine machine guns. You're bending the 14th fret of the G string, and when you get it to the top, you're picking it again and releasing, and then back to 12, and then up to 12 of the D, up to 14 of the A, back to 12 of the D, and then hammering on twice from uh, 12 to 14 of the D and then back into the machine gun. Now the key here is that the first time you do the machine gun, you're doing it nine times. Uh, four sets of down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and then one last down. After this part, you're only doing it seven times because you're stealing two of them from this. That second hammer on is stealing two of the uh, two of the machine guns. You understand what I'm saying? So first time, nine times, seven times, one more time. Oh, sorry, machine gun. And that's seven times. Uh, you follow that? You're stealing two, uh, two machine gun strokes by adding the second hammer on. And uh, you don't have to, but that's what Jimmy does. So uh, up to that point from the machine guns. Now this time. So then you're, you're, you're basically doing the same thing. Bend, hit, pick, release. Back to 12. And then you're doing a long trill between 12 and 14 of the D, about four or five times. and then you're back into the machine guns again. So up to that point with from the machine guns. And now we're into this part. And that is a tricky lick. Uh, we're bending the 15th fret of the G with vibrato. And then we're barring the uh, 12th fret of the B and the E, and then riding those two notes up, up to 14 of the G, back to 12 of the uh, B, and then, and then you're basically rolling up to the 12 of the G, and 
then pulling off 14 to 12 of the D, and then up to 14 of the A. And he plays that pretty quick, and the picking technique here is you're going to go three upstrokes, one downstroke, three more upstrokes. And that's a tricky little lick. So, and then you're going to, and then you're going to grab the open uh, E. So let's get us up to that point right there from the machine guns. And then you're going to, after, after you uh, come out of that, slide out to the open E. And then you're going to go 14, 12, 14, 12 of the D. And then you... going to grab the 14th fret of the G and the B together and then bend them up and release them and then you go and then bend again release to 12 and then up to 14 of the D so from the top of the machine guns More machine guns, but this time you're going to mute uh, on the the top three strings at the at the twelfth fret, and that's basically giving three half step bends at the twelfth fret of the A, and then the final one is on the natural note at the twelfth fret. So it's two bends, two half step bends, and then back up to. 10 of the A and then up to 12 of the E. Now the reason I'm shifting up here for the mutes is because if you mute in this little box that you're in doing these, you run the risk of hitting the uh, harmonic at the 12th fret of each of those notes. You don't want that. So shift up here a little bit to get a good machine gun. And then the second time, you're going to go. So you're doing the same thing at the 12th fret, back to 10, and then up to 10 of the E. Except this time you're only doing one half step bend. And then adding vibrato to that 10th fret of the E. So uh, that part from the machine guns. And then you're going to do it again. And then you're going to slide out of the second one. And then we're into the next part, which has a kind of a riff, I suppose. Um, so let's take it from the top and uh, I'll, I'll go fairly slowly. slide under that to an open E and then you're going to grab the uh, second fret of the D string and you're going to give that uh, a few trills between the open and the second fret about five I think and then you're going to grab the open E again and then you're going to bend the uh, second fret of the G string a full step bend and then you're going to grab the uh, the uh, open B, the open E, 
and then give that a bend, bend release to open, and then up to the second fret of the D. One more time. again about five times uh, between the second fret of the D and the open D. So we're, we're coming out of this. And then one last open E to finish that whole little lick. Uh, so one more time coming out of this. parts about having your guitar detuned uh, a full step is it makes these makes your strings much floppier and it makes it makes bending those notes up here at the neck a lot easier because your strings are looser uh, so where were we from the top and then we're going to dig into part two into this part. Uh, so I'm going to play through, this is going to be part two, I'm going to play through this part here and then we'll dig into it. stuff to remember. Um, okay, where are we? We're bending the 14th fret of the G string and then we're grabbing the 15th fret with our pinky of the B. Now in the recording, I've listened to this, I don't know, 200 times in the last couple of months, 300 times maybe, that's a lot. Um, I still can't tell whether he's hitting the note once or twice. I don't know if it's delay or the tremolo effect that he has on his guitar, which I have a little bit on. Uh, a quick word about that. Uh, Jimmy's using a univide pedal in this one. It gives kind of a wow-wow-wow effect, uh, kind of a vibrato effect to his guitar. And, of course, he's using fuzz. So I can't tell whether uh, it's two notes or one note still. So I keep listening, and I'm still trying to figure it out. But that, when you bend the 14th fret of the G and you grab that note at the 15th fret of the B, I don't know if it's two or one note. At least from the Phil Maurice performance. It sounds like two to me, but uh, for now we're gonna do it as one. Now this section here, we're working in the E minor pentatonic. Uh, it's a lot of licks and it's a lot of E minor pentatonic licks. I'm not going to walk you through it note by note by note and fret number by fret number. I'm going to play it and then I'm going to play it slowly a couple of times and you know which notes you're using in the pen pentatonic and you can follow along and this should be fairly easy to figure out. I'm going to move in a little bit so you can see my fingers and uh, because uh, walking these licks through note by note and fret by fret would be painful. Uh, so here's the first lick. I'm hitting it twice. So. One more time. Two more times. Second. 
Hagenlek. You're bending the notes in unison at the 14th fret of the G and the B. full speed. And then we're into the third lick. So we're at the 12th fret of the G and we're giving it a full step bend. You got to be careful here because your strings are so loose not to overbend the notes. And when you get to the top, you're going to release and you're going to bend it again and give it vibrato. And you're going to do it two or three times. And then you're going to slide into 14. So from the bends, uh, two more times. Fourth lick. Now you're getting into an index bend there, which is tricky. Sliding out, open G, open bottom two strings. And then you're sliding into the third fret, the G note on the open E. And then open and then open D hammering on to the second fret of the D. So you're doing that twice. And then you're going to slide in from the second fret into the fourth fret of the G string. And then ride between that note and the open B twice. And then back to the second fret, pull off uh, to the open G and then up to the second fret of the D. And then back up to the open G. And that one more time. So that whole little part. And 
uh, one last time. And then he starts singing. for part two and uh, so that'll get you for, through the first two minutes of machine gun and uh, i'll be back in a couple of days with part two and we'll finish up we'll get it to about the four minute mark and then maybe i'll do a part three where i'll show you some licks and tricks and whammy bar dives and and uh, lots of fun stuff that jimmy was doing in the main solo of this one and uh help you uh, get through machine gun and uh, so i hope this helped you out and uh subscribe <laughs> if you're not subscribed and hit the little notification bell so you know when I'm releasing videos. I'm the dude that's doing the top 100 uh, greatest guitar solos of all time. So you might want to follow along on that. And uh, so anyway, some great, great Jimmy, classic Jimmy right there. So I hope that helped you out and we'll see you next time. Ciao.